Hello everybody, welcome back to Jersh Reacts. In today's video, we're gonna to react to Wildest Dreams by Taylor Swift. You all have highly recommended this song and this video, so I'm super excited to finally get to check it out. If you like what you're seeing on my channel, make sure you subscribe, it helps out a lot. If you wanna support me further and make sure the channel keeps going, I have links in this video description to my Patreon and my Twitch Prime. They are both at Super Jersh, just like the YouTube. Uh, so yeah, I've got the official music video pulled up and I've got the lyrics pulled up so we can go through what the song is about. So, uh, yeah, let's check it out. E, G sharp, G flat. Let's get out of this town. Or A. Drive out of the city, away from the crowd. I thought heaven can't help me now. Nothing lasts forever. E, G, E minor, F. Sorry, I get caught up uh, in trying to figure out the notes just because it's, it's fun for me. Um, especially when I feel like I can figure it out. If I'm way off, I keep my mouth shut. Um, let's see. He said, let's get out of this town, drive out of the city, away from the crowds. I thought heaven can't help me now. Nothing lasts forever, but this is going to take me down. So tall, handsome as hell, so bad, but he does it so well. I can see the end as it begins. My one condition is, say you'll remember me. Standing in a nice dress, staring at the sunset, babe, red lips with rosy cheeks. Say you'll see me again, even, it's, even if it's just in your wildest dreams. Um, so it's like she, she met somebody, she fell for him, but she knew that it wasn't going to go anywhere. The least that she wants to do is be remembered. Don't just be a fling. Don't just be somebody that was used. Be somebody that mattered, even if it was temporary and it wasn't this long-lasting thing. Don't just be another somebody. Be, you know, a specific memorable somebody. Um, even if it's in your wildest dreams is interesting. Hmm. Let's keep going. And the, the video's gorgeous. It's like, yeah, it's like an old-timey film being shot, uh, like, <laughs> in Africa with wild animals around. I said no one has to know what we do. His hands are in my hair. His clothes are in my room. And his voice is a familiar sound Nothing lasts forever But this is getting good now He's so tall and handsome as hell He's so bad but he does it so well And when we've had our very last kiss My last request is Say you remember me Standing in a nice dress Staring at the sunset Babe, red lips and rosy cheeks Beautiful video. The lighting, the costumes, the lions. That's all fake bullshit. <laughs> Red lips and rosy cheeks. Say you'll see me again, even if it's just Brits and Say you'll remember me.
Bummer, bro. Oh, nice. That was a beautiful video. Cinematography, the lighting, the costumes. Nature. Yeah, I think the sentiment of say you'll remember me even if it's in your wildest dreams is like, you know, even if it's at an, at an unconscious level, even if it's just because I'm on your mind sometimes randomly, don't want to be this completely nothing person that you completely disregard from your memory, that it was all pointless and meaningless. Um, yeah, and it kind of reminds me of Lady Gaga's Remember Us always remember us this way because it's like don't just remember me remember us at our best in our clothes in our makeup kissing at the sunset you know what i mean don't remember me with my morning breath and i haven't got dressed yet and sorry i forgot what kind of food you like and we aren't eating shit for breakfast forget that remember me in front of the sun <laughs> oh man yeah, catchy tune and melody. Um, I like um, the way that she changes up how she sings lyrics. You get used to a melody and then she does something different with it, sings it faster, slower, uh, things like that. I really like the, uh, yeah, I like the production value of these videos. I mean, that said what, copyright 2015, so this is five years old and it's still entertaining and was worthwhile and, and, and looks good and is a great accompaniment to the song itself to give you an idea of what the message is and look at that that's just that's beautiful all of it's really gorgeous so yeah good song a uh, good mellow catchy song with an interesting an interesting perspective of the meeting someone and breaking up you know wanting to be remembered kind of thing and then uh the, another great music video to watch with it so this was great surprise Whoa, a different jersh in a different shirt in a different time with a different video. What the hell is going on? So I was editing uh, some of my reactions and I noticed that when I listened to Wildest Dreams, I was so caught up in the song that I barely stopped it. I didn't talk about it that much. I just was watching the video and listening to the song. So I didn't uh, think that that video on its own would be good enough to release standalone. It was like seven or eight minutes, um, which that rarely happens with me. So kudos to that song just playing out and me enjoying the video and the song. Um, but I thought uh, this would be a good opportunity to revisit Bad Blood, the studio version, since a lot of people asked me to do that since I had previously reacted to the featuring Kendrick Lamar version, which you all told me was a lot different. You said there was a lot more lyrics in the original studio version. So I have the studio version lyrics uh, pulled up. And for this like double feature Taylor Swift reaction, we're going to react to that too. So let's get going. Baby, now we got bad blood. You know it used to be mad love. So take a look what you've done. Cause baby, now we got bad blood. Hey, now we got Still a good melody. Okay, I'm trying to remember, was somebody, since I did the original reaction and I read some of the comments, some people had told me 
that I think this was about Katy Perry, that it was beef with them before they made up on the You Need to Calm Down video. Um, so yeah, this is not a romantic relationship. It was more of a uh, relationship between uh, pop star colleagues, friends, competitors. You know, it's got to be a weird space. Um, it's a weird space to be online to like on YouTube to want people to watch you, but also recognize that, you know, other YouTubers need to be supported too. So it's like we're in this competition slash camaraderie, but I think that's all entertainment. Um, so let me get to this verse that I don't remember if it was in the original or not. I don't remember the lyrics. I haven't listened to that version since I did that reaction. Did you have to do this? I was thinking you could be trusted. Did you have to ruin what was shiny? Now it's all rusted. Did you have to hit me where I'm weak? I couldn't breathe. Rub it in so deep. Salt in the wound like you're laughing right at me. Um, it's so sad to think about the good times. Were they like best friends or something? I don't know what their relationship was before there was bad blood. I just maybe thought it was, yeah, we both make pop music, you know? Um, not all pop stars know other pop stars, you know what I mean? So maybe they specifically did know each other and have a friendship. Um, but yeah, let's keep going. And again, this this is a chord um, progression that is used a lot. It's like um, C, G, D, E minor. Uh, it's very catchy and it's a, a good melody. Another example of it would be um, Final Masquerade by Linkin Park. That chorus, same chorus as this, just at a different place on the guitar. It's in the past, these kind of wounds they Say sorry just for show is interesting. A lot of people give you fake apologies to just to be because they're tired of arguing, not because they actually see the error in their ways, and that just pisses me off more. Um, it looks like based on the lyrics of being stabbed in the back that they did know each other, that they weren't random strangers. Um, that would be my assumption based on that. Um, and yeah, this is I mean this is a beautiful um, chord progression. Green Day uses it in uh, Boulevard of Broken Dreams. Brand new uses it in No Control. A lot of a lot of bands use it. There's only so many notes to go around. Um, but uh, yeah, it's good. I mean, I use it in a song that I wrote, just in a different way. There we go. Oh, you live like that. You live with ghosts. Band-aids don't fix bullet holes. You say sorry just I think I remember that lyric. You live like that. You live with ghosts. I think it's a really interesting choice to basically drop out all of the other instrumentation except for the drums in the first half of that chorus. Um, it's like a weird light coming in. I can't ignore it. Um, what else was I going to say? Um, this is also, I think, a really good example of why I don't really care so much about 
if I know what the song is supposed to be about ahead of time or what the intention is. Because what's amazing and what's beautiful about music and movie and television and creativity and entertainment in general is we take in information and then we can apply it to our lives to uh, get catharsis, to feel better, to be introspective, to think about things we're going on in our life, and then we can try to do better right? So if I'm pissed off and I'm fighting at somebody and I want to listen to Bad Blood to vent, let off some steam and, you know, get my emotions out through music instead of arguing and being a bad person, then that's good. But if I would stop and say, well, this is about Katy Perry, so it doesn't really apply, then I can't use the music the way the music wants to be used. You know what I mean? But if, but the fact that the, you know, the lyrics are open. It doesn't say F you Katy Perry. It says me and you have bad blood. You as the listener get to make the you whoever you want it to be. So it doesn't matter that, you know, an altercation with Katy Perry caused this song to go into motion and to exist. What matters is that you get to listen to it. And then somebody that you're having a problem with, you get to use this song as, as a way to get through that. You know, it doesn't matter where it came from. It matters how it affects you, you know? So, I don't know. That's the fun. I really like the studio version. I didn't mind the uh, alternate uh, video version, but I was distracted by all the green screen and all the other different uh, stars that I didn't really recognize. And I also thought it was just a lot of the chorus repeated, so it was really cool to see. I think there was some definitely some new lyrics there and to not have so much of the um, synth stuff, which, I mean, I love I love synth. I like all the synth in Gaga, in Katy Perry, in metal songs that I'm listening to recently. I like synth. But it was cool to hear just the original studio version of this. And, um, yeah, to kind of be reminded of what this is about. And it's about the messages and the meanings that I pull from these songs. And then it is super fun to find out, oh, that's where it came from. That's what caused it. That's really cool. It doesn't change my connection to the song, you know. So I definitely dug the Wildest Dreams song and video, and I for sure like Bad Blood. It's a catchy hook and um, fun chords. So hopefully it wasn't too jarring to have a double reaction in this video, but I did not want to put out a video that I didn't think had enough to say, enough going on. Plus I'm going to take the time to edit it. I might as well feel fulfilled in the video itself for me on my end. So uh, yeah, that's gonna, that is definitely going to do it for this video. Uh, comment down below uh, if you have any thoughts on what I said about, you know, meanings from the song and how you use music and entertainment in your life, and if you have any other recommendations for reactions on my channel. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.